This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so let's go through and have a look at an example that takes us through some of the extracts that you might have to prepare as part of the question related to groups linked in to our changes in ownership because there's loads of information in this question. It really does get quite complicated. Maybe I've just taken it to extremes uh, to give you coverage of both acquisitions and disposals, but you really do need to go through there and think through it carefully. So you might not get it straight away. Once you've watched the video for the first time, you might have to watch it twice, uh, read the notes, work the example yourself a few times to really fully understand what's happening. So strap yourselves in, brace yourselves for a ride, and let's have a look and see what we have got. Okay, again, uh, the focus is on the calculation. Obviously, within the exam, there'll be some calculation and discussion, but the discussion is coming from my mouth, isn't it? Okay, so you can put that into your own words. Uh, calculate for inclusion within the consolidated position statement of the Riley group. So Riley must be the parent. Uh, and the year end is there the 31st of December, as our reporting date. And it wants us to work out some goodwill, some non controlling interest, and then some group retained earnings. Okay, so looking at working three, four, and five uh, respectively. Okay. Uh, the background information, we, we can split it into two. Uh, there's five paragraphs in total, I think. Uh, the first two uh, relate to what happens is it there with Hume and then the next two uh, go through there and look at what happens with is it Jones okay uh, and then the last bit is just to go through there and explain to us that it's the group policy uh, to value NCI based upon your fair value method so we'll be given the fair value the non-controlling interest in Hume and the non-controlling interest in Jones when we go through and acquire it. Okay, excellent. Uh, so I think it's important to understand the background and the structure and importantly the dates when these transactions are happening. So it says here, uh, Riley acquired a 60% holding in Hume on the 1st of January 2014. So is that two years ago? So when we're going through there and looking at, is it Hume? Uh, we had, was it a 60% holding? Uh, it gives us some background information to do with what happens at acquisition. But then more importantly, at our reporting date, the 31st of December 2015, we acquired a further 10% of those shares so we've gone from 60 percent we've bought another 10 percent so that takes us to 70 percent the key bit there is what we have here is we have control and then we still have control following the acquisition so what you have there is a, is a change in ownership isn't it okay a transfer between the nci and the reserves uh, if we go through there and have a look at jones uh, so jones riley initially acquired 90 percent on the 1st of january 2015 so the start of this financial year Again, it gives us the background in terms of what happened at the acquisition date. But similarly to what we had with Hume at the reporting date, the 31st of December 2015, uh, Riley disposed of 20% of those equity shares. So what we initially had was 90%. So we will have had a control. We have disposed of 20%. So that now takes us to 70%. But again, the key aspect there now is that we still have control. Okay. 
So we were a sub, we are still a subsidiary. There is just a change in ownership, isn't there? Okay. Uh, and the change in ownership ultimately are that we had a 40% NCI in Hume, which has now gone to a 30% NCI. So we'll need to deal with that as a change in ownership. And then with Jones, it was a 10% non-controlling interest. And we now have a 30% non-controlling interest. Okay. Key bit is that when it comes to the first part of the question, uh, working out the goodwill, uh, we will have calculated the goodwill at acquisition. So for Riley acquiring Hume, that will be on the 1st of January 2014. For Riley acquiring Jones, that will be the 1st of January 2015. And as we still have control at the reporting date, don't we? that goodwill will still be there. Okay, It could be subject to an impairment. I don't think there has been any impairment in this question. But we will just process our standard goodwill calculation for both, is it Hume and Jones. Okay. So again, it's your standard pro forma. Is it the working number three? Uh, so what we've got there is the fair value of the consideration, the non-controlling interest, and then we deduct the net assets, don't we? Okay. So we now need to extract that information. So let's look at each subsidiary individually. Uh, so for Hume, the cash consideration was 75 and the fair value of the NCI was there at 40, wasn't it? So we've got there, is it 75 and 40, uh, which if we total that up, gives me 115, isn't it? Okay, uh, let's leave the net assets for now. For Jones... Uh, we've got a cash consideration of 120 million. Uh, the fair value of the NCI was 13. So we've got there, is it the 120, the 13? Does that give me 133? Uh, we then need to deduct the net assets. Okay. Uh, I suppose the best thing to go through and do here, if we're being consistent, again, you may not decide to do this within the exam, it's up to you, but we can start looking at the net assets of the two subsidiaries. So we can go through that. And look at the net assets of each sub. So we can go through that and look at, is it Hume? Uh, we can go through there and look at, is it Jones? Uh, we can go through there and look at, is it the share capital and the retained earnings? And we can look at that at year end and at acquisition. So as is two. Uh, I've just ever so slightly changed the layout. Okay. Uh, I haven't put in that post acquisition column. I'll deal with that separately. Okay. Uh, so what you've got the year end comes from the statement of financial position. Uh, so what you can see there is you've got 80 and 65, 75 and 45. So is it the 80 and 65, 75, and 45. So that 145, and is that 120? Okay, 80, 65, 75, 45. There we go. Okay, uh, again, same rules apply, don't they? Uh, year end, share capital. 
is exactly the same as what we would have been at acquisition. So is that 80? And is that 75? Uh, so all we need now is the retained earnings at acquisition of each of Hume and Jones. So for Hume, it was 25. For Jones, it was 35. So total up Hume's column, that's 105. Uh, total up Jones's column, that's 110. There we go. Okay. You probably forgot why we were doing that. Okay. Uh, the reason why we were doing it is to work out the net asset to acquisition of each of Hume and Jones. So is it there 105? and 110 so less 105 less the 110 uh, so does that go through and give me 10 as goodwill in Hume 23 is the goodwill in Jones so the total is 33 million just adding the two together being the 10 and the 23. Okay. There we go. Uh, and the reason why we've calculated it and not changed anything is because we still have control at the reporting date. So we still control all of that goodwill, even though the ownership percentages have changed. They are both still greater than 50%. So we therefore have control, the power to direct. So therefore that goodwill is not changed. It's only once we no longer have control uh, which will then mean that we de-recognize that goodwill. Okay, there we go. Excellent. Uh, wow, told you it was going to be a tough question. Uh, so we've done part one. We've done the goodwill, haven't we? Uh, what about the non-controlling interest, the NCI? Well, let's forget about everything to do with the change in ownership. Let's just stick with what we know first. Okay. So we're going to look at the non-controlling interest in Hume. Uh, we're going to look at the non-controlling interest in Jones. Uh, and what we have there to start off with is we need to look at the non-controlling interest at acquisition. Well, we know that already. Uh, we've got those figures there. Is it of 40? And is it 13? Okay. Uh, to that, we add on the NCI share of the post-acquisition movement in retained earnings. Now, here, this is where the question is made a little bit more simplified, and it would be the same in the exam, is that the change of ownership happened at the reporting date. So when we're looking at the post-acquisition profits, we're looking at the post-acquisition profits right the way up to the end of the year okay uh, there has actually been no trading since the change in ownership took place so what we can do there is we can look at the post acquisition profits of Hume which are 40 uh, we can look at the post acquisition profits of Jones which are 10 and the subsidiaries profits of 40 and 10 will have been owned by the non-controlling interest up until the reporting date based upon that 40% and 10% holding of ownership. Okay, because remember, all of this happened, didn't it, on the 31st of December 2015. So up until that date, the NCI owned 40 in Hume and 10 in Jones. So here, what we've got, is it 40% of 40 and 10% of 10. So 40 times 40, 16. Uh, and 10, that, that, that's one, isn't it? Okay, so up until that date, you've got 56 
and 14, which is the non-controlling interest, that second before that change in ownership actually happens. Okay. Because then the last thing that happens in that year is that the change in ownership takes place. Okay. So there's going to be a change in terms of Hume. So remember, Hume's NCI has gone from, was it 40%? To 30% and Jones has gone from 10% up to 30%. So leave yourself a little bit of space between those there. Okay, before you then start the next lines. I'll just head it up Humes and Jones. Sorry, Hume and Jones so you can see what's what's what. Uh, because let's go through there and look at Hume. Okay, uh, Hume. We went through there and acquired 10% more shares in Hume for a cash consideration of $15 million. So here we will credit the bank with the $15 million. And the non-controlling interest has gone from 40% to 30% hasn't it? There's been a reduction in the NCI. So to reduce the NCI, we are going to debit it. And what we're doing there is that there is a transfer from the non-controlling interest. The non-controlling interest is reducing, isn't it? So we need to transfer that non-controlling interest from what the NCI previously owned to what they now own. So we're giving them back some of the NCI. How much uh, and of what? Well, the NCI was at 56. So how much of that are we giving back? Well, we're giving them 10% out of the original 40 of that 56, isn't it? Yeah, 56 million was the NCI. That related to 40%. So we can work out what each percentage is uh, by dividing it by 40. And if we're giving them 10% back, we can apply that 10% to what each 1% was worth. So 10 fortieths of the 56. Uh, again, check my maths. I think that's the, is it as 14 million? And then the balancing figure there is a debit to your reserves. And that is there, is it as the $1 million? Okay, there we go. Excellent. Uh, what do I need to process? Well, there's a debit to the non-controlling interest. I'm not too worried about the reserves just for now. But that debit to the NCI reduces the NCI by the 14. So does that bring me down now to NCI 42 at the reporting date that millisecond after that change in ownership actually went through and happened okay oh yeah that's that's a bit of a challenge isn't it okay uh, and then what we have following on is jones so what's happened with jones uh well jones some of the shares in jones were disposed of uh, and they were disposed of for $35 million. for well, be a nice bit of cash to receive, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, so we're therefore going to go through that and debit the bank. Uh, debit the bank with the $35 million. Again, what you've got now is that in terms of Hume, there was a reduction in the non-controlling interest. With Jones, there is an increase in the non-controlling interest. So you're going to credit the NCI. So you're giving the non-controlling interest more of a share within the net assets and within the goodwill. So what you've got there is that there is a transfer to the non-controlling interest from the net assets of the subsidiary. So here... The transfer is based upon an increase of 20% because we've gone from 10 to 30. 
It's the NCI now own 20% more of the net assets and the goodwill. Well, the net assets of Jones at the reporting date are there as 120. And the goodwill is there as 23. So here. So that's your net assets and goodwill. Okay. Uh, so you've got 143. Let's just check that we get the numbers right. 120 plus 23. There's 143 times by 0 0.2. Is that, is that 28? 0.6 billion. And then again, your balancing figure is a credit. A credit to reserves of 6.4 million. Okay, excellent. Uh, again, just make sure you've got your credit to the NCI of 28.6. So that's going to be added in there, 28.6. Uh, 14 plus 28.6 is that the as uh, 42.6 and therefore if I total them all up my total non-controlling interest is 84.6 million dollars okay there we go excellent Wow, that's hard. The calculation there, that's hard enough. Having to explain it would be even more challenging, I think. But I think you need to understand the calculation before you can begin to go through and put in any explanations. OK, uh, I don't think within the exam you'd have both scenarios, the acquisition and the disposal. I think you would have one or the other. OK, uh, so have a look and see if it arises uh, in the future on our new strategic business reporting paper. Uh, the last bit of the question, uh, if memory serves me right, is that we've now gone through and done the non-controlling interest. Uh, we now need to look at the group retained earnings. So our group retained earnings are there as 100% of the parent. So what have we got there? That's 110. Uh, plus... Is it, well, 60% of Hume's post-acquisition profits? Is it 90% of Jones's post-acquisition profits? So is that 60%? Uh, Hume, I think, was 40. So that's 24 Jones, I think, was there at 10. So that gives me 9, doesn't it? OK. Uh, don't forget then that you have the change in ownership of Hume. Uh, so the change in ownership that you had of Hume was this debit to reserves of a million. So a debit to reserves of a million reduces it by 1 million. Pardon me. And then the change... In Jones, uh, it was a credit to reserves of 6.4. So that's an increase of 6.4. And when you total that up, does that give you 148.4 million dollars? OK, there we have it. Excellent. Uh, so admittedly, a challenge. However, I think it's a challenge that you, that you can overcome and that you can meet head on. Again, if you're in the exam, don't just focus purely on the calculation. As you put in the calculation, that's when you need to start writing at the same time as doing the calculation. OK, so you can split your page into two. The top half can be the calculation. The bottom half could be the explanation. You are literally just explaining and writing down what you are doing. So if we look at the, the, the goodwill, for example, you would explain that we're calculating the goodwill at acquisition. Uh, that is based upon the fair value of consideration, 
we add the fair value of the NCI and deduct the net assets at fair value, okay, to reflect what those net assets are worth on acquisition. Even though there's been a change in ownership, we still have control at the reporting date and therefore the goodwill on acquisition of the subsidiary still is contained within the group account because the parent controls the goodwill of Hume, controls the goodwill of Jones. There may be some subsequent changes to it, but that would be purely down to any impairment. Okay, there we go. Okay, just explaining what we have done. Uh, you'll get better as you work through the questions within your chosen tuition provider study tech. So work through those questions first before you're brave and crazy enough to get into those revision kit questions. Personally, I would work through the study text chapter by chapter first and then wait until you've covered all the chapters to start thinking about the revision kits. I will see you for the next video and the next example shortly.